Yo, what is going on guys? It is JBob here and today I'm really excited to show you how to create your very own Minecraft Bedrock server. I've actually been running my own Bedrock server for almost a year now called StupidCraft and I've been really enjoying it. And some of you guys who've been playing on the server or have been following what I do here on YouTube for quite some time now have been asking how you can create your own server. So I thought I would take the time today to show you how to do that. How you can create your very own Minecraft Bedrock server. But first, let's talk about why you would want a server as compared to a Minecraft Realm. So, here we are in Minecraft Bedrock Edition. Now, I know many of you already know what Realms are and maybe have used them in the past, but I want to quickly explain what they are as well as what the differences are between Realms and servers so you can better decide which one you want to get for what you're trying to do. Now, Realms are basically Minecraft's version of servers that you can purchase directly through them and run and operate them right in Minecraft locally, which is really cool. Whereas servers are ran through a third-party host, and you can make all of your changes to your server and run it through their website. Now, both Realms and servers are actually always online, and anyone can join them even when the host is not online. One downside with Realms is you can only have 10 players online, 11 if you're including the host of the Realm, whereas servers have infinite amount of players, as many as your server can handle. Now, Realms are actually super easy to set up. As I said, they're ran and operated directly in Minecraft, and the setup is simple as just buying the Realm and then setting it up as you would a normal Minecraft world whereas servers are a little bit more intensive. You have to purchase the server through a third-party host and set it up on their website through the server panel and make all of those changes there. Now, Realms have a very limited customization. You basically only get the options like when you're creating a world in Minecraft locally, whereas servers have lots of customization, and you can actually even add plugins depending on what type of server you're going to get. And plugins are super cool, and they can really add to your server. You can have mini games and a whole bunch of really cool plugins to really add to the Minecraft experience. Now, Realms are coming in at $7.99 every month for your subscription for your Realm. And that is a little bit expensive as compared to a server, which can be really cheap. I know with their hosting, who I use, they have servers starting at 75 cents per month. But you would probably need a $3 per month server to do most things on. So that's really cool that you can actually get a server for cheaper than a Realm. Now, Realms actually have limited support. There's not a whole lot of support that you can get with Realms. You have to go straight through Mojang, and it's this long, lengthy email process where you have to wait back for a response. Whereas with servers, you can open a support ticket and have a live chat right on their website, and they're usually pretty quick with getting back to you with your help. As well as servers, a lot of the hosts out there have Discord servers where you can reach out to their community to see if anyone may have an answer for what you're looking for. Now another drawback with Realms is they actually have a limited world file size that you can upload to your Realm. I believe this is around 5 gigs. Now this is kind of a problem because if you're trying to add a world to your Realm that is quite big, over 5 gigs, you will not be able to do so. Whereas servers, you can upload worlds that are literally as big as you want. And that's pretty much all the differences between Realms and servers. I would say Realms are more geared to people who are looking for a super easy way to set up a world where them and their friends can join and that world can be online at all times. Whereas servers are more geared to people looking to play with much more people on their server where they can do much more with it. So hopefully that helps you make your decision with what you want to get, either a realm or a server. But yeah, now we're going to go ahead and continue to show you guys how to set up a server for those of you who decided that a server is the best option for what you're trying to do. So first things first, I want to make sure you guys actually know how to join servers before you go out and purchase a server and start setting it all up. Now this does vary a little bit depending on which platform you're playing on. So I'll go ahead and explain how to do so on each platform. Now, if you're on Windows 10 or MCPE, the mobile version of the game, you'll actually have a super easy time adding and joining servers. All you got to do is click play, head over to the servers tab, and then under your featured servers, you'll see the additional servers where you can also find the add server button. You go ahead and click that, and then right in here is where you'll type the IP address, which you'll get when you create your server. And then basically, once you have that all in, you click play, and you're good to go. 
Now, if you are on the Xbox version of Bedrock or the Nintendo Switch version of Bedrock, there's a few additional things which you're going to need to do in order to join servers. First things first, if you're on Xbox, you're going to need Xbox Live. And if you're on Nintendo Switch, you're going to need Nintendo Switch Online. Now, both of those just allow you to connect online and you can't do so without them. So make sure you have other Xbox Live or Nintendo Switch Online. Now, the second thing is on Xbox and Switch, you won't actually have this additional servers down here or the add server button. The only thing you should have access to is the featured servers, at least for the time being. Minecraft on those devices doesn't actually allow you to add additional servers without doing some additional work. So basically, there is a little workaround for that, and that is by changing some of your device's DNS settings in order to connect to external servers. So I actually have two tutorials, one for Xbox and one for the Nintendo Switch, linked down below. So if you are on the Xbox or on the Switch, go ahead and pause this video now, go and check out that respective tutorial, follow that and get it all set up and working, and then go ahead and head back here. So yeah, that basically sums up how you can join servers. As you can see, I have a few servers here that I can join. And yeah, that's basically how you add servers and can join and play on them. So now comes the fun part, actually purchasing and setting up your server. I like to use Wither Hosting. I'm gonna show you how to do it through Wither Hosting today. They're an absolutely amazing host. I started using them when I started hosting my, my Bedrock server, StupidCraft, and I liked them so much, I ended up switching all of my Java servers over to them as well. And yeah, like some hosts out there don't actually allow you to have Bedrock servers, but Wither Hosting does, which is amazing. You can get Bedrock and Java servers through them. As well, they're just an amazing host. They have really great support through their website as well as their Discord. Their servers are really great and fairly priced, and they have nodes all over the world for you to choose where your server is hosted from. So basically, let's go ahead and get started with them. Basically, what you wanna do is in this video description, you wanna scroll down to the Wither Hosting link and click that, which will bring you here to their site. And then they have the login tab up here, which you'll go ahead and click and go to the client and billing. So this is where you're going to go ahead and log into your Wither Hosting account. As you can see, I've already done so here. If you don't have an account yet, no worries, just create an account and then get it all set up and ready to go and get logged in. And then you should be brought to a page that looks like this. This is the Wither Hosting client area. Now here in the client area, you can do quite a few things. You can purchase servers, you can purchase domains to have a cool IP for your server, you can manage your billing, all of your server subscriptions, you can find support information, open a support ticket, and even apply to be an affiliate. Now let's go ahead and find a server that we wanna purchase. So we're gonna go over here into services and order new services. Now here we have a bunch of different categories, but we're gonna go ahead and choose Minecraft Basic because we are getting a Bedrock server. Now in here, I know it may be a little bit intimidating because there is a whole bunch of different servers to choose from. They have a server that literally starts at less than a dollar at 75 cents for one gig of RAM. Now this goes all the way up to they have a server that's $15 a month for 20 gigs of RAM, which is quite a beefy server. Now, there's a few different things I'm gonna mention here depending on what you're trying to do with your server. So uh, yeah, let me just kind of explain what, what the deal is with some of these, with what you guys are trying to do. So first things first, if you're going to wanna play on the classic vanilla server jar, it's pretty hefty when it comes to the RAM and it uses a lot of RAM and CPU power. So I would recommend at least getting the Sheep server, the four gig one, if you're going to just run the classic server jar. And I'll get in more with the server jars and what the differences are between them here in a minute. Now, if you're running Nucket or Pocket Mine, you could probably get away with running the Rabbit or Pig, these smaller servers, if you're just going to have a few players on and you're not doing anything too intensive with plugins. But if you are having lots of players on and you're going to be using lots of plugins, again, I would recommend at least four gigs of RAM for your server. Now, again, if you're knowing you're gonna have a whole big community of people on or gonna use insane, like crazy plugins, I would recommend maybe getting something a little bit more beefier. Just kind of gauge on what you want to do with your server with what you, you know, how much RAM you're gonna need. And you can kind of look into the plugins and what kind of like how many players you want on your server. You can look that stuff up online and forums and kind of figure out what you need for your server. Another cool thing about Wither Hosting is you can actually upgrade or downgrade your server at any time without canceling your subscription. 
So basically, say if you're running this pig server here with two gigabytes of RAM, but you're actually using all of your RAM and your server is lagging really bad because you have a bunch of people playing on it that weren't playing on it before. So what you can do is go over into your services, find the server that you're wanting to upgrade, and then upgrade it to something with a little bit more RAM. So that way you get better performance out of your server. And same goes with downgrading. So say if you're running this 10 gigabyte server here, but you're only using three gigabytes of RAM, you can then go and maybe get this four gigabyte server and downgrade your server and save a little bit of money. But uh, for this tutorial, I'm just gonna go ahead and get the sheep server because I'm just going to run the classic vanilla uh, server jar. So let's go ahead and order this sheep server here. So right in here, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the softwares and the differences between them. We're gonna go ahead and run just the classic vanilla just uh, as I feel like that's what most of you guys would want to do, just have a classic vanilla server to play on with you and your friends. So that's what we're going to go ahead and choose. But um, yeah, that's basically just the base Minecraft game. It plays just as you would normally play Minecraft. Um, but the sad thing about it is you can't actually add any plugins to it. Now, Pocketmine and Nucket do allow you to add plugins. Pocketmine is more focused around mini games and kind of using like mini game plugins. And it has world generation that's just the same world over and over again. There's no custom generation whatsoever. Now, Nucket is actually what I use for my server, StupidCraft. And it's really cool because it allows you to add plugins so I can have anti-cheat and a bunch of other cool plugins to add to my server to make it a better experience for people who play on it. Now, Nucket does have some issues where it doesn't actually allow you to craft all of the items that are currently out in the game. It's a few updates back, as well as the generation. It does generate its own custom terrain, which is cool, but it is a little buggy, and it isn't the greatest terrain as compared to like the vanilla bedrock terrain. So depending on what you're trying to do, if you're running a minigame server, go pocket mine. If you're running a big community server on bedrock, I would recommend using Nucket. I mean, it does kind of suck that you can't craft all the items that are in the game and the terrain generation is a little weird, but having anti-cheat and being able to add your own plugins is a huge win when it comes to running a community server. Now, if you are just looking to create a server for you and your friends to play on and you just want the base game with like everything that it has in it, go with vanilla the uh, bedrock server jar. So that's what we're gonna do for this. As I said, I think most of you guys who are wanting to create servers are looking to create them for you and your friends. Um, if you are looking for something that's a little bit more community based, like you're trying to have a server like mine, Stupid Craft, I can maybe make a tutorial in the future on how to set up a Nucket server, but it is a lot more intensive with all the plugins and everything like that. So just for today, I'm gonna make the classic vanilla bedrock server. Also here, we have the dedicated IP. If you're going to have quite a few people playing on your server and you want it to be easier for them to join, you can select this, which will use the default port that's automatically in the ad server, which is really handy because you only have to remember or give them the server IP to join. Um, whereas if you don't check this, you're gonna have to give them the IP and port. But if you're not gonna have a bunch of people joining and you don't really care that much, you wanna save a few dollars, go ahead and not check that. Um, so I'm not gonna check that for this because we're just using it for a test. Also, next we have our location. These are all the different nodes you can choose from. They have New York, Europe, LA, Germany, Miami, Australia, and Singapore. As you can see, a few of these are out of stock at the moment, but uh, they usually um, add more nodes or add more space to those nodes as time goes on. So if you're, you're in one of these areas and you want them, maybe reach out to where they're hosting and they can add uh, more space on those nodes for you to get a server. But I'm gonna go ahead and just choose New York because that's the closest node to where I am right now. So then our server name, I'm just gonna go ahead and call this test three because I actually have two other test servers. So I just wanna be able to tell which one is which. So yeah, this is gonna be called test three. And uh, lastly is the server mitigation which basically is just um, them helping you move over files from an old server. So if you don't have a server or you're not moving data over from another server, then you don't need to check this. But if that is something you wanna do, go ahead and check that box. All right, we got everything looks good. We got $3 a month, we got our vanilla bedrock, we don't need the dedicated IP, got our node and our server name. Let's go ahead and check out, baby. So over here, we have our checkout screen. I actually have a spicy little code for you guys. If you type in JBOB, all caps, you'll get a spicy 25% off your first two months. If you guys are getting a server, use my code. It gives you some free cash to you know save on your server. So you know why the heck not, all right? It brings our $3 server down to 225. Heck yeah, dude. So let's go ahead and check out.
Now you can actually use PayPal or Stripe, which is for credit cards, um, to pay for your server. Um, if you don't have PayPal, it's really easy to set up. You can connect it to your bank, and uh, Stripe's also really easy because you just give them your credit card information, and then you can pay for the server. Um, I actually have some money in my credit balance because I have a lot of servers through with our hosting, so I'm just going to use my credit balance. And uh, yeah, we'll just go ahead and agree to the terms and say I'm not a robot, of course. <laughs> and then we'll go ahead and complete our order here. All right, sweet, sweet. As you can see here, our order has been completed and we're gonna see receive an email to the email that we created our account with here in a second. It actually is really quick, so you should get it like right away. I'm gonna go ahead and find mine now. And here we go. As you can see here, your server has finished installing and is now ready to use. Server name, test three. So let's go ahead and log in and begin using. So as you can see here, I have quite a few servers. <laughs> we are now in the Wither Hosting game panel. You can actually get to from the Wither Hosting main menu by selecting game panel instead of uh, client area. So uh, let's go ahead and scroll down here and find our server. There's our test three server, awesome. So let's go ahead and manage our server. All right, so here we go. It looks like our server is started. First, let's go ahead and stop our server and make some changes. So let's go over here first to management and then to properties. And let's go ahead and change our server name to something fun. Yeah, there we go, sub to jbob. Let's go, baby. So yeah, as you can see, sub to jbob. Got a nice little server name. If you guys haven't subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Uh, <laughs> let's go ahead and change our difficulty to normal because we're here on survival. Let's go, let's go. Um, let's go ahead and change our players to 30 because we're going to want to have quite a few people on maybe. Um, 30 might be quite a bit for a 4 gigabyte server, but I guess we'll see. Um, we're going to go ahead and not do the whitelist at the moment. I can show you how to set that up later on here. Um, idle timeout, let's just keep that at 30, sure, which will kick you after a certain amount of time at inactivity. Yeah, looks good. I think everything looks good. Yeah, sure. All right, let's go ahead and save. Looks good. And head back to management, or excuse me, system. And then let's go ahead and start our server up again. And as our server is starting here, you'll see a bunch of different things come up here. And you'll see at the very end, once it's all on, the Wither Hosting will come here and say, server is marked on. That's how you know your server has successfully started. Now let's go ahead and find the IP and port for our server so we can go ahead and join it. So let's come over here to configuration, over here into ports, and then this right here is our IP address. You're going to want both your IP address and your port as the information you need to join the server. So maybe take a note of this, write it down somewhere, so that way you can have it to join your server as well as to give it to any friends that may be joining or any players that you want to join your server. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy my IP address and then go ahead and remember this port here, 19198, 19198. I think I got that there. So let's go ahead open up our Minecraft. So here we are now back in Minecraft. Now this is where things get a little tricky again. If you're on Xbox or Nintendo Switch, you need to follow those tutorials, which I had linked down in the description. Hopefully you already watched them and have came back to this video. If not, please go watch them so you can learn how to join servers um, and just follow that until you can get to the add a server page. And if you are on Windows 10 or MCPE, the mobile edition of the game, you're just gonna go ahead and follow what I do here. Click play over to your servers and down to additional servers where you can find the add a server button. Again, you Xbox and Switch users should have something like this as well. The background's a little bit more gray, but hopefully you guys can find what page I'm talking about. So let's go ahead and title our server test and copy in our IP. And our port was 19198, I believe. And let's go ahead and save that. This is where it gets a little funky. If it does the locating like this um, for all of your servers, you're going to actually need to restart your game real quickly because that just means that Minecraft bugged out and it's no longer loading servers and you need to quickly relaunch your game. That's just a quirky little bedrock bug that happens all the time. If you play on uh, these servers, you probably have that issue all the time. So yeah, that's just something you have to do if it does say uh, locating like this server does down here. But looks like our server up here does work. So let's go ahead and click on it. And as you can see, we have our 30 players. And let's go ahead and join our server. Check it out. And here we are on our server. It does take a little bit to load in the first time when you're connecting to the server, but here we are. It looks like we got kind of a trash spawn. What is this? Are you serious, bruh? Freaking survival island, no trees. Oh, come on, dude. 
Well, let me quickly show you, in case something like this does happen, how you can change your world to other a custom world or to just reset it to a new seed. So let me go ahead and close my Minecraft here. So now that we're back here into our server panel, let's go ahead and stop our server. Awesome, nice. Now you can see our server marked as off. That's good. So let's go and head over to management. And then we're going to find the worlds file. So we're actually just going to go ahead and delete this. And when we restart our server again, it will then generate a new world. Now, if you do want to upload your own world, you're just going to need the world file. So if you want to download a world from online, you can do so, or you can download worlds from Minecraft onto your computer. I won't show you how to do that. There's plenty of tutorials online that show you how to download worlds. But yeah, that, that's basically what you do is download your world and then bring it over, just drag and drop into here. And then, uh, so for, for us, we're not going to actually drag over a world. We're just going to generate a new one, come over here into system, and then start our server up again here. And it does take a little bit of time because it does have to regenerate the world. But here we go. Server is marked on. Awesome. So now let's go ahead and hop back on Minecraft. And here we are back on Bedrock. Let's head back over to our servers page. And let's see if our servers will load in here. There we go. Awesome. Let's just check our ping for our server as well. It takes a little second to load in. 57 ping. Not bad. Let's go ahead and load into our server. And again, this does take a little bit of time when you're first generating a new world. And there we go. Awesome. Look at this. A lot better of a spawn. Not on some silly survival island. Come on, dude. But yeah, as you can see, our world is looking good. We got actually trees. Let's go. So yeah, you can just basically now play on this world as you would as a normal survival world. Or if you want, you could change your game mode to creative in the console if you want it to be a creative world. Um, you can you can do anything. Uh, it's pretty simple to, to navigate your server and kind of make changes to it. It's all pretty self-explanatory with what I've shown you so far. Um, but yeah, let's let's go ahead and just do a few other things real quick. So let's go ahead and leave our server. Just a few extra things you can do to your server just to make it that much better. Here we are in our server panel yet again. Let's go ahead and to management and then properties. So let's say we want our game mode to be easy because normal was just too hard for us that that's what you can do you can change that here uh, we can change our view distance any of this stuff if you do change the view distance and some of these things it will make the server run a lot harder the ram is going to be used a lot more so you kind of have to play around with some of that stuff but yeah all this stuff looks good sure we like our easy a lot better than our our normal for whatever reason sure let's well, just as just as an example head back over into our system now let's go ahead and set up a whitelist. Now a whitelist is basically like a little check to make sure that you're allowed on the server. So I go ahead and make a whitelist and turn it on and then only the people that I added to the whitelist can join the server. So say you want this to be a private server for just you and your friends, you could then just go ahead and type in here white list and then on. Go ahead and enter that in, whitelist on and then just go whitelist add oh actually I think on these you actually have to go into management properties and then turn on the whitelist this way whitelist true and then save there you go on my other servers you can just type whitelist on so let's see whitelist add jbob to bmm there you go so you, you go into the uh, into your settings, turn on the whitelist first, and then you can add people to it. And you just want to type in their Minecraft username after whitelist add. So yeah, that's a simple way to set up the whitelist. All right, and then we'll just quickly restart our server after adding the whitelist, and then the server is marked as on, as you can see here, awesome. Now let's go ahead, load back into Minecraft. And now, as I'm whitelisted and our whitelist is on, I should be the only one who can join my server. So this is a cool way to protect your server from just having random people join. But yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. If you have any questions, you can leave them down in the comments down below. If you have any trouble setting up your servers, just open a support ticket with Wither Hosting. And yeah, you'll pretty much be good to go. It's really easy to set up your server and get it going. It just takes a little bit of time, but once you do that, you're good to go. Let's go ahead and join our server here again and just play around for a little bit. Sorry, I was getting a drink, but here we are <laughs> back in the server. It takes a little bit to load in, but here we are. Let's kill the sheep, maybe get some food. Come here, boy. Heck yeah, dude. Now we got some food. We gaming. We gaming. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much it. How to set up your own bedrock server. It's not too hard. It just takes a little bit of time and work. But once you do it, it's absolutely awesome. You can now play on this world with as many of your friends as you want. 
and it's online all the time and it's it's just it's just a lot better than a realm to be honest because you can kind of make a lot of changes to your world with uh, the server settings that you can't really with realms and also you can have way more than 10 people which is the max on realms so yeah this is really cool really simple way to uh, set up a little server for yourself uh, if you guys are looking for something more advanced let me know in the comments down below like maybe if you're looking how to set up a uh, nugget server for a big community or something like that let me know and i can maybe work on getting a tutorial set up showing you guys how to do that but yeah this is just kind of a plain simple way on how to get a server set up for you and your friends but yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. This has been JBob, and I'll see you guys in the next one. I hope you enjoy your servers. Peace.